Sometimes I use watercolor paper. More often I use tone print making paper. And uh, I've used so many varieties and over the years I've settled on Reeves BFK. Now I use tan. I sometimes use white and gray. And I, as I said, I sometimes use watercolor paper. The reason I like it, the painting is toned. Uh, this performance, you could say, is about three hours long and uh, it's possible that I might work, continue working uh, for another hour or two, but basically the painting will be intact after about three hours. And uh, this paper has a life of its own and it has a, a color and tone of its own. And um, so I've learned to set up this watercolor and gouache against a tone sort of paper. It makes my job a little bit easier because I don't have to deal with the uh, uh, with the white. The uh, sometimes the lower ranges of the painting are, are vignetted, uh, and I don't have to deal with all that white. And with figure work, I like the warmth of the tone or even the contrast of the gray and laying those colors on top. Now. Uh, I use exclusively American Journey watercolor for the watercolor and, uh, and then I lay on um, Da Vinci gouache which I get from Cheap Joe's. Now um, watercolor and gouache are exactly the same materials with this difference. The percentage of the binding elements and so forth is a little bit different in the gouache to the watercolor. I couldn't tell you exactly what those differences were, but it's the exact same stuff. Gouache has um, chalk added to it to make it opaque, and the pigments are milled a little differently. In pure water, in transparent watercolor, the pigments are a little finer. Looking at the table here, I have the timer. Um, this would be important. We work in 20 minute segments. And I generally use two sorts of brushes. Um, always use this skipper brush that I purchased from Cheap Joe's. I bought these brushes about 12 years ago. Uh, this is a new skipper and this is the old one. You can see I've worn the old one into a filbert shape. This and it's got a beautiful knife edge on this. I could paint only with this brush always and do good. But I, in addition to that I use a workhorse. This is a filbert number six. Uh, I use a brush about this size for detail, and this is about as uh, detailed as I get. I have a little spritzer bottle here. Of course, the water. And then uh, this approach is unique because I use a roller. This is a speed ball from, from Cheap Joe's, and uh, I'll be getting started with this in a minute. Uh, one thing, I use a knife for watercolor painting to mix my pigments sometimes. That's different. Most watercolorists don't stir their paint with a knife. Uh, you will see as this process goes on that I really do use quite a lot of paint. See charcoal, willow charcoal. This is Windsor Newton, vine, a very fine charcoal. Now when you get paint on your printmaking paper and then go back on top of it with this, uh, the paper has been sized a little bit by the paint and so this charcoal lays on top and you can almost blow it off. It's just divine. This is an array of, of uh, American Journey paint by Cheap Joe and I uh, have a, quite a variety of colors here. I generally end up using about six pigments and I'm not really sure which pigments they'll be until I get into the, to the process. I try not to have a standard, standard formula. I don't mix my darks a certain way or my violets a certain way, um, nor do I put flesh tones on in exactly the same way. In fact, I try to make sure that I don't because I sell my work and I don't want it all to look the same. I want those flesh tones to be fresh and slightly different from other paintings that are nearby of mine. And so I have the uh, dark to medium tones in pure watercolor. And then I have uh, the gouache in, this is a studio size PBO white gouache because I use a lot of white. And then uh, Da Vinci yellow ochre, yellow light, and orange. Those are my gouaches. And everything else is watercolor. I'm going to, uh, I don't necessarily do this all the time, uh, but at this red hot moment, I am going to put a wash of yellow green on this page 
My only true yellow here is a gouache. Uh, if I had had a watercolor, that would have been perfectly fine. I would have used it. So I'm making my green, in this case, with uh, yellow and viridian. And because I don't use very many colors, I don't put my paints out on the palette like a rainbow, which is what I would teach a beginner to do, to have uh, one place for each color. But I'll only use about six, so I don't, I don't bother with that anymore. There's a nice bright yellow green. I'm using this color because I think it'll be a nice foil for the, uh, it'll add light to the painting and it'll be a nice foil for the color notes that are set up. Let me just go ahead and put that on and spread it around like so maybe. Just getting some tone on that paper. This is the wash is not cons consistent. I mean, it was had more green in it when I started. Now it's got a little more yellow in it. Move it around. I mostly use a speedball four inch roller. I do have other rollers though. I have a two inch that I occasionally use, but I don't count on it. All right, get a little more tone on there. Now I could have done this before we started filming, but I guess maybe it's kind of fun to see one approach. Now another time I might not do this at all. Might not put a wash on. But there's so much light in our setup here that I feel like I need to have some color of light. You know our colors of light are yellow, yellow green, orange, sometimes red depending. And so I've added a little bit of tone to that piece. And I have a few drips, which I admire. I like those. And I think this would be a good stopping place for just a, just a little bit. We'll give Robin a break and get going, uh, setting up some other colors here. <laughs>